So we're going to do kind of a fun video today where we're going to look at movies and TV that feature some kind of coding or programming or hacking or some other technology in the show and then pick it apart to see both what they're doing and whether or not what they're doing is accurate. Movies and TV that depict programming have a varying level of accuracy when it comes to what they put in those movies. We have a few we're going to look at so let's get started. The first clip is from the social network so let's watch it. First up is Kirkland. They keep everything open and allow indexes in their Apache configuration. So little w get magic is all that. So looks like he's using a Linux or Mac terminal and he's running the wget command with the dash a option. And what that's for is if you had a publicly available index that you wanted to download a bunch of stuff with and you want to do so recursively, you could use wget and specify dash a to say which file types you wanted to look for. So maybe that's like .jpg, .jpg, maybe .png and others. So that appears to be what he's trying to do and this this does look accurate. Obviously the actual command gets gets cut off towards the end but he's he's probably activating recursive mode as well and using some additional dash a options okay let's keep going it's necessary to download the entire okay so we can actually see the wget command being ran here and from what i know about wget this looks perfectly correct okay let's watch the next clip thanks leverage is a little better they still make you search but you can do an empty search and get links to pages with every student's picture it's slightly obnoxious that they only let you view one picture at a time and there's no way i'm going to go to 500 pages to download pics one at a time so it's definitely necessary to break out emacs and modify that Perl script so all right break out emacs and modify that Perl script that that all seems correct this is indeed a Perl file and this is indeed emacs now keep in mind this movie is set in roughly 2004 and so this version of Emacs is actually what it would have looked like in 2004. And as far as the fact that it's Perl, you can tell both by the syntax, which Perl has some somewhat unique syntax, and then also the shebang at the top where it says user bin Perl. It's hard to tell exactly what this code is doing, partially because it's blurry and we don't actually see the entire file, but from what I can tell, they're making some dynamic calls to wget, probably to scrape the pictures that they wanted to scrape. All in all, it's actually pretty accurate. All right, next clip we're gonna look at is from Mr. Robot, so let's take a peek. Okay, so there's a couple observations here. You can see he's on Kali Linux. This is a popular security and pen testing distro. So if somebody were to be doing the things that Mr. Robot was doing, then he would probably be using Kali Linux. So that's accurate. All of the code being written here is Ruby. This is for sure Ruby. And the reason they're using that is because Metasploit framework is one of the most popular exploit frameworks and it is written in Ruby. So that's commonly what gets used. It's kind of funny because I pretty much never see Ruby used and this is kind of the only time that I see pure Ruby being written. All right, let's keep watching. So this is just more Ruby code. I don't see anything particularly wrong. It all seems accurate. The one thing of note is this upcase, and that might look like something ridiculous, but that's actually how Ruby does uppercase. They call it upcase and downcase, and I, I know that's really dumb, but that's that would be the equivalent of like to lowercase or to uppercase in other languages. But because that's what Ruby calls it, it is accurate. Next clip we're gonna look at is from Criminal Mind, so let's have a look. The system is insane. It's completely Linux based, open source programming. And you don't see this in government systems, I mean, outside of like Switzerland. James Colby Baylor. Right, I get it, chop chop, geez. Okay, so as far as the code on the screen, the code on the left is definitely C, and I can tell that from the put env and the string compare functions that are on here. These are both C functions, and they're being used properly. There is some stuff at the bottom of the code, like source and whatnot, and I don't particularly recognize that, so that could be a uh, slip up there. Let's just keep going. Uh -uh. Okay, so this last bit of code is 100% Visual Basic, things like option explicit, dim as long, bival, private sub, and all these other keywords are very uniquely Visual Basic. The function at the bottom here called text1 key press is kind of telling because that tells me that it's probably a desktop application because that's what a function would be named if you had a text box named text1 and you wanted to respond to key press events. The only thing that looks out of place here is the code on the screen is probably not the code that they're actually looking for. And I'm just basing that on the context of watching the more full clip of what they're trying to do. Next clip we're gonna look at is from the movie Antitrust. So let's take a peek. In the middle of something? No, I'll check this out. Huh? Huh? Wow. Who did this? Uh, 
Josh or Venkat or what? Somebody, yeah. Think you can use it? Yeah, the compression is awesome. Okay. Oh, come on. Structure is perfect. Okay, so the code depicted here is almost certainly Java. There is another language that it looks similar to, and that's C Sharp. There's a couple of reasons why I, I know it's not C Sharp, and that's from the Boolean type. So Java calls their Booleans Booleans, and C Sharp calls it Bool. The other way in which I know is C Sharp does not support breaking out of nested loops, and we see in this code that that is occurring, and that is something that Java definitely does support. Now the one glaring absurdity in this code is how they're doing string comparisons. You can see where they have buff and then they have 0, 1, 2 and they're looking for GET as well as HEAD and that's determine you know what the HTTP method being used is. Instead of just checking if the buffer starts with GET or HEAD, they're actually doing individual character comparisons to see if each letter is correct. This is almost certainly not the way to do it. This next clip is from Swordfish where he's building the worm. So let's have a look. So this scene gives the impression that building viruses or worms is kind of like starting with this virtual skeleton and you just attach different objects to it, the things depicted by cubes on the screen. And this is obviously ridiculous. You don't attach literal cubes to each other to build code. Let's keep watching. Please Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, see, he's getting close. He's got his port scan objects. They're almost assembled. Let's keep watching. Oh, no. Sorry, pal. Your port scan objects are gone. Well, try again. So clearly this is not how it's done, but it is amusing enough. Let's keep watching. Oh, fuck you. Shit, Ooh, he's very, very upset about his port scan objects. Okay, let's watch this next clip. Okay, so there's a little bit of code that we get to see here, but it doesn't look like anything I recognize, so it's likely to just be entirely made up. Let's keep watching. Oh my, I actually never realized this before. It says algorithm, like the music rhythm and not algorithm. That's actually really funny, especially considering I've watched this movie like 20 times. I've never seen that. All right, let's keep watching. So he does eventually triumph and get his worm completed. You can tell that the worm is completed because all the little cubes are together. Because, you know, that's how that works. So this last clip is called Castle, and it's self-described as the most accurate hacking scene ever, but obviously they're being sarcastic. So we're just going to watch this. We're not going to watch the whole thing, just some clips. There's really a lot of funny stuff in here. System breach. Oh. Firewall one. I absolutely love ridiculous of this clip already Someone because it's like, oh, Firewall 2, it's already breached. Here we go. Hacked. By locks at? I don't know. But we've been so careful. How could they find us? They haven't found us I love yet. It so much. The oh, firewall three is almost done. I'll start an intro. Oh no! What are you gonna do? We'll find out who our rat is. Uh oh. Uh oh. Decrypting. Uh -oh. IP address is being tracked. Track our IP address. Oh, can you stop it? No. But I can slow him down. It's coming from inside the city. He's trying to narrow it down. Okay. Ooh, getting dialed in. This this is perhaps my favorite part of the entire clip is uh, start Counter Strike because you know if you're counter offensive hacking then this is probably what you would write start Counter Strike. Okay, now we're just gonna watch the very end. Uh oh, firewall six decryption. I could launch a cyber nuke, but it'll completely fry his system. Launch a cyber nuke. He's got a backup system at home. Is that a go for launch? Yes. No, 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 no. Oh. oh. 
Oh, well, you know, when the cyber nuke goes off, you know, obviously it's going to ruin all the computers. And that's it for all the clips. As you can see in all the clips, I showed you how coding and programming and hacking is portrayed in Hollywood is of a varying degree of accuracy. Some of it is actually quite accurate, such like uh, Mr. Robot, that's actually pretty accurate. And some of it is not even close, such as that clip from Castle. About the clip from Castle, I will say, however, I don't think that they were intending to be accurate. I think it was just supposed to be funny, but nevertheless, that is not how things work. I hope you enjoyed the clips I found. If you have a clip in mind that I didn't show that you think is really cool, let me know below in the comments which movie or TV show it is and what they were doing. Anyways, thanks a lot for watching. Have a great rest of your day or night and take care.